It is no secret that I am a sucker for sim racing equipment that has an original design, something that we don't see quite often. So when the founder of Rock Solid Rigs approached me and asked if I wanted to get an RSR21 for review, I said no, with the reason being I have already plenty of rigs at home using space. However, this rigs design is so different that it intrigued me so much that I decided to do something different, an interview with the designer of the chassis to learn more about the design and the choice of materials. If you'd like to see more of this type of content, don't forget to subscribe, it does help a lot the channel. If you want to check a review of the RSR21, check out Dave Cam's video. My name is Mark Foster, uh, I run Rock Solid Rigs Limited. So my career was mainly in Formula 1. I was a design engineer for uh, about a decade and a senior in the second half of that and uh, I designed front wings, uh, parts of the chassis, uh, Formula One simulators. In order to make a, a stiff uh, chassis, it became apparent very quickly in the design process that you needed twin lateral bulkheads. Uh, that enables so a bulkhead either side of you, which enables you to keep the stiffness of the chassis constant throughout the adjustment range. Plywood quickly became uh, the obvious choice. Essentially, a, a nature's composite, it's wood fibers in uh, 90 degree orientation stacked which makes a very very stiff and, and stable material uh, and the way you join it together the way we join it together with barrel nuts is, is a very effective way of uh, clamping the parts together it means you're not trying to shear out thread from the wood you're trying to shear out a huge chunk of the wood which means you can have high clamping loads between parts uh, enabling you to have a very, very stiff structure. It is the right material to use for a sim rig. It's as simple as that for me. It enables you to have more of a monocoque design where you've got the, the load paths going straight from your seat to your pedal base. Uh, it's the correct way to do it, as far as I can make out. Uh, it's, it's one of the most expensive wood materials you can buy, uh, and it's you know very high quality. And the good thing about the wood is that you can make whatever shape you like. So every part is custom made. Uh, to the exact specification we wanted. Probably about 19 layers there of stacked plywood. Um, and when they're bonded, to the main, one sheet is strong in one direction, like a, comp yeah, like a UD composite, and you glue them together at 90 degree angles to create a, a very, very stable and stiff material, uh, which looks quite nice as well. This is the most important design feature of this rig, is these uh, longitudinal panels. Uh, the panels alongside you, the bulkheads. It's essentially more like a monocoque. You are loading from the seat to the pedals directly in, in a straight line. Most sim chassis uh, is more like a, you have a separate chassis below you and you have the driver and controls above and um, it, it, it puts the load in kind of a U-shape, so down, across and up. This is very much a straight line. No matter what orientation you have the seat and, and the pedals in, you're loading it straight on, which results in you know, a much stiffer structure. So the biggest hurdle, we've not taken this lightly, it's been a long design process. Um, it's taken thousands of hours of development to get to the shape we have. Got a lot of opinions from people who knew about sim racing, a lot more than I did anyway. And we then uh, put it out to the market. And the main challenge we had with the market is that uh, metal chassis is, is pretty much accepted to be the standard for the last decade. And we're coming in saying, you know, th this is uh, better, this is more effective, uh, this is stiffer and more adjustable. And our customers said, you know, th that we're very lucky, we have a high demand for the RSR21 chassis, uh, but they wanted us to prove it. So we're out to prove that we are not just a competitor, we can better metal chassis. So we uh, worked with a company called Aerotech to design some testing apparatus to prove the stiffness of the rig, basically. So this, this uh, pedal is based on, uh, it looks a bit funny, it's based on a Heising Veld Ultimate brake pedal because it's the most common high-end uh, brake pedal. So basically what we do is uh, we attach this to the rig in place of the pedal. We've got this black pad at the front and inside the pad uh, we've got uh, four load cells. And the reason you have four load cells, I've done this test before in, in, uh, on a Formula One car about uh, 10 years ago. And I did two load cells then, and you had a, a bit of a rocking, and you didn't, you, unless you have four, you don't really get an accurate result. So the four gives you a nice, accurate reading if you load it right in the centre. And when, what you do is you load it up, you get your reading of load there at that display, it should be showing up, and you then have a DTI at the back, 
and your read and reflection there, so the DTI is mounted to the ground. The stiffness of the chassis, I have to be very careful from, from a legal perspective, I can't name other chassis. Um, we do believe we are the stiffest and most adjustable chassis. And that's not enough, I can't just say that, that's not enough for our customers, we're proving it. So the material itself, the plywood, it's a, a birch plywood. Uh, it was very important for us to be environmentally responsible. So the wood, it's, it's the highest, it's FSC approved wood. Uh, basically means it comes from essentially uh, it's managed forests uh, kind of like a more like a farm so they, they grow the trees to be harvested uh, in, in the northern hemisphere and uh, it's as responsible as you can get for sourcing wood it's not perfect perfect is making nothing at all uh, and doing nothing uh, so it's as good as we can get we are we are our credentials are way and above anybody else in the industry as far as, far as we can make out we are uh, arranging audits to prove this and uh, another thing we are also doing, we're working with a company, an American company, uh, called the Eden uh, Project, and basically means we're going to commit to planting trees at the same time as we, so every time we sell a rig, we will be planting trees in areas of the Southern Hemisphere, which, it, which is sort of environmentally beneficial to do so. With all of this engineering and wood talking, from what I've tried out, and I must reiterate again that this is not a review, the result is a rig that is indeed sturdy. We have tried the rig with the Simicube 2 at 25 Newton meters and in a Seto Corsa Competizione at around 50%. We were also running a somewhat heavy pedal, the Oxing Velt Ultimate, so in terms of flex, very little, if at all, was felt in the main portion of the rig. It remained its composure at levels similar from extruded lumen solutions currently in the market. At the high loads we were testing, and we tested it even with my friend Vitor, which is on heavier side. The only vibrations we could see were at the edges of the side monitors, which is something to be expected. In the central structure though, it was as rigid as it was claimed. If I have to mention any downside, it would be the central area, which looks a bit tight. And it was a little bit of a squeeze to get inside, and this is compared with my Sematic A2R, which I'm running, that has more legroom than a Class S Mercedes. But after we were seated, we had plenty of space. At the price of £299 for the base and at around £650 for what we tested with all the accessories on which you need to add tax and shipping, the RSR21 seems to be of excellent value with all of what it offers, which is not only the engineering, but also the green credentials. These green credentials were one of the reasons why I wanted to do this interview, as it's something that is becoming more important by the day. The other reason were donuts. Oh yes! Uh, one thing I love about sim racing is that you can jump in any car, any track, at a moment's notice, and it's a lot of fun. I get more excited about younger people coming through and getting better in the simulators. I believe that the world champions of the future are coming up in sim racing now, and that's what gets me excited. I really hope you have enjoyed this new format of video and guys if you enjoyed this don't forget to leave a like and subscribe but tell me in the comments if you'd like to see more about that wheel we seen in the video the custom made 720 s gt3 wheel uh, replica mclaren if there's interest from the community in this wheel maybe we can get a few insights on how to make something like this or maybe in the future we'll have the maker of this wheel doing other wheels for the market thank you very much for watching and i'll see you next time